morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, my name is Paul. I work on uh, AMP, and I'm also on the DevRel team uh, at Google. And uh, I'm really going to skip that mostly, right? I mean, unless you literally just arrived, you've heard about progressive web apps. They help you turn your site into reliable, fast, and engaging, exper engaging experience. But what if you build the most amazing progressive web app and nobody discovers it? Or it doesn't wait long enough until the service worker uh, has installed your app shell to make subsequent loads snappy. Keep in mind that the service worker is awesome, but doesn't help at all with the first load. Even though the service worker API allows you to cache away all of the site's assets for an almost instant subsequent load, like when meeting someone new, it's really about the first impression that matters. If the first load takes more than three seconds, then our latest double-click study has shown that more than 53% of all users will drop off. So half of your audience will never, ever get to see your content. Now, in three seconds, let's be real, is an already brutal target. On mobile connections that often average around a 300 milliseconds latency and come with other constraints such as limited bandwidth and establishing a signal. And so you might be left with a total load performance budget of less than a second to actually do the things you meant to do to initialize your site or app. Uh, but don't worry, it gets worse. <laughs> By the way, if you really want to load in under one second, says Rail, deriving that number itself from a book on usability by Jacob Nielsen. Your site does more than three round trips to server? Well, sorry, you probably failed. So don't feel too bad, though. The overall landscape of today's web looks a lot grimmer. The average mobile page loads in about 19 seconds, with 77% of those taking more than 10 seconds to load. Now, the crazy thing about the 10-second mark is that at 10 seconds, actually 100% of all your uh, uh, users bounce. <laughs> so at 10 seconds, no one will ever get to see your site. And then it's 214 survey requests, of 50% of which are at related requests. So at first click, that first impression is what matters. We wanted to get rid of slow loading pages, but also solve runtime performance so you can scroll really efficiently and uh, other usability issues at the same time. And fortunately, we have a solution for it, or we think we have a solution for it. We call it accelerated mobile pages. AMP, short for Accelerated Mobile Pages, is an ecosystem consisting of a web components library that allows you to declaratively write HTML, we call AMP HTML, because it's both a superset and a subset, and AMP caches, basically CDNs, uh, or more technically re correct, reverse proxies. That's accelerate the delivery on top of that. Um, and then so you can do it in two ways, actually. You can, you can either just build one, you know, use AMP like a library, build just one page, and you have one canonical page for everything. Or you can uh, use a link meta tag in the header and then just generate two pages in your CMS um, and create one HTML page and one AMP HTML page. But that's really up to you, uh, whatever you prefer. In a nutshell, it turns authored pages into a highly portable fast and user-friendly units that platforms then like Google, Bing, or Pinterest can safely and quickly embed. And so it's a really rich and growing library of web components. Now, a lot of the baked-in performance optimizations you could probably do yourself if you're an experienced developer. But the AMP cache onto itself is actually a very important component, not just because it's a free, super-fast CDN. The AMP cache works tightly together with the prioritized loading and static layout system of AMP. Documents served from the AMP cache are much cheaper to pre-render because AMP knows where each page element is positioned, even before any assets are loaded. So allowing you to load the first viewport without any low-priority third-party stuff. And the actual site owner won't ever know about the preload, which is another very interesting point. Super important for privacy reasons, as the site could otherwise write cookies and mark the page as seen. You know, if you're searching for diarrhea on Google, you might not want everyone, every of those pages to actually uh, write a cookie on your behalf and, uh, <laughs> and give you diarrhea ads everywhere. Uh, sorry for putting that image in your head, by the way. <laughs> 
Um, so AMP pages are really just HTML and CSS. There's no, you can't have any user authored JavaScript on the page. That's one limitation. Instead, a lot of custom elements. And sandbox AMP iframes allow you to still do everything if you want to do something like a you know, crazy animated graph or something that is really custom to your page. And then the AMP open source library uh, is the same everywhere. So it's just one, it's hosted on one CDN URL and, and, and uh, you include it from there. And that means it's evergreen, it's highly cacheable. We can upgrade all AMP pages uh, in less you know, than a couple of days, a couple of hours maybe even, if we have an important fix to do. And it def defines the behaviors for those custom elements. And then manages rendering and resource loading to optimize performance. Now, the important question that you might, you might, uh, might come up in your head is, do you want to go AMP or PWA? You, know, you, you learned a lot about progressive web apps uh, already in the last couple of sessions. And we, we've been hearing that question constantly. But in order to be reliably fast, you need to live with some constraints when implementing AMP pages. So if you want to go AMP, uh, you won't get the biggest progressive web app benefits on a first click, right? Uh, as you are, um, so from, from a progressive web app, you won't get that first click experience. Uh, but with AMP, you don't have a custom service worker when it's loaded on the AMP cache. So you can't do anything fancy in there. It means no push, not push, push notifications, no web app manifest when served from the cache. Um, and so if something isn't available as a component, you can't just hack a script together, for instance, to support web payments or push notifications. Now, those of you that already read about the individual advantages and disadvantages of progressive web app versus AMP have surely struggled with this question before. And, and on one hand now, you have instant delivery, uh, almost instant delivery, optimized discovery, uh, but then again, no user scripts, and mostly for static content. On the other hand, you have, on the PWI side, you have advanced platform features. You, of course, you can build everything you want, really, Highly dynamic, um, but it's a slow first del delivery. And really, again, the first delivery is highly important. And it's not easily embedded um, in, in third party platforms as well as AMP. So, what if there was a way to combine those two to really reap the benefits from both? In the end, what, what I think is what matters is the user journey. The first hop to your site should feel almost instant. And the browsing experience should get more and more engaging afterwards. Now, AMP and Progressive Web App are both critical components to make that happen. AMP pages for the first navigation, and then your Progressive Web App for the onward journey. Now, let's first talk about AMP as Progressive Web App. Because I won't cover this in detail in this talk, but it's important to note that many sites won't ever need things out of the boundaries of AMP. AmpByExample.com, for instance, which is an examples page that uh, the AMP team uses to showcase a lot of AMP components, is both an AMP page and a progressive web app at the same time. So it has a service worker, therefore allows offline access and more, and it has a manifest prompting the Add to Home Screen banner. Now, you might have heard me saying, well, you can't have those things, but that only means you can't have those things in AMP when it's served from the AMP cache, meaning the first time you might click on it on a platform like Google Search, you won't get those benefits. But the next time you click out, you actually get it. So once you arrive on the origin, the service worker installs and, and does a lot of fan fancy things. So when a user visits ampexample.com from Search, then clicks on another link on that site, you navigate away from the AMP cache to the origin. The site still uses the AMP library, of course, but since it now lives on the origin, it can use the service worker, prompt the install, etc. AMP by example uses that technique to do just that. But I had some fun on ampproject.org, um, at least on a local branch. I thought, what if we already have a service worker intercepting? We insert more random stuff into the page. How about things? I mean, we can pretty much do everything we want in that fetch event, right? How about things that AMP doesn't like? Because the cache does, doesn't see the service worker. It doesn't really care about the service worker. So we can do pretty much everything we want. So I got a little nostalgic. I'm like, hey, why not throw in some 90s DHML magic? Um, so I found this fancy cursor uh, that I think improves my page. 
Um, so here we go. Yeah, we I use the ServiceWorks panel. I uh, reload the page, and yes, I got a JavaScript animated backdrop and a really fancy cursor, and I think it dramatically improves the experience of our documentation pages. Uh, so first, dear God, what have I done? <laughs> um, second, please don't do this at home. But it's it's a technique that allows you to make amendments, uh, you know, change uh, what you can do on an AMP page, just insert more stuff. So now to the more interesting bit, transitioning a user smoothly from AMP page to Progressive Web App. There are two ways I'm combining the two, Step, steps I personally call AMP up and AMP down. AMP up is the background bootstrapping of your Progressive Web App shell while the user is enjoying your AMP page. And AMP down describes reusing AMP pages as a data source for your progressive web app. The basics with AMP up are that the first click will be an AMP page, usually served from the AMP cache. And then any links on that page will navigate to your progressive web app. So normally that second click would still be considerably slower than the instant feeling preloaded first click on your AMP page, but it's a powerful component baked, in, baked into AMP. The AMP install service worker attack that without writing any custom JavaScript allows you to install your service worker for your origin. So yes, even when your AMP page is served from the AMP cache, it installs the service worker from your origin, uh, downloads an app shell, and bootstraps your progressive web app, which means at the time the user reads your article, your progressive web app is already loaded and ready to go. And uh, the Washington Post actually does this. That means while the user is reading your article, uh, yeah, actually, I just said that, <laughs> uh, can warm up. So it's working warm up and pre-cache. When a user now clicks on a link on a page or call to action at the bottom, your progressive web app shows up instantly. And uh, Alex Russell called it this pattern, start fast, stay fast. This is what I call AMP up. But now you're in the progressive web app. And chances are most of, are using, most of you are using some AJAX-driven navigation that fetches content via JSON or some other data backend. Now, you can certainly do that, but now you have this crazy infrastructure needs. So you have two totally different backends, one generating AMP pages and one offering a JSON-based API for your progressive web app. But think for a second what AMP really is. It's not just a website. It's designed as an ultra-portable content unit. It's also a data format. The AMP team has asked themselves the logical next question. What if you could dramatically simplify backend complexity by ditching the additional JSON API and instead reusing AMP as a data format for our progressive web app? We started with a proof of concept many months ago and iterated on it for a while to see if this pattern actually works, rewriting many parts of AMP to make that reality. So how did we do it? Well, of course, one easy model would be to simply load AMP pages in frames. But iframes are slow. And now you need to recompile and reinitialize the AMP library, the AMP JavaScript library, over and over. Today's cutting edge web technology offers a better way for that, and it's called Shadow DOM. In the old world, our worldview was simple. One window, one instance of the AMP library and one document. But in that new world, there's one window, one instance of the AMP library and multiple documents. So this results in super fast transitions between AMP documents as the library only needs to be compiled once. So you only got the one AMP library compiled once. The process looks like this. The progressive web app hijacks navigation clicks, then does an AJAX request to fetch the requested additional AMP page, and puts the content into a new shadow root, and tells the main AMP library, hey, I have a new document for you. Check it out. And does that by calling attach shadow doc on, on the runtime, the runtime which is what we call the AMP library. So even cooler, we have added a conditional CSS class on shadowed AMP documents, so you can automatically hide stuff like headers in embedded mode. So the AMP shadow class uh, does that. And shadow slots, which is coming pretty soon, uh, allows you to insert advanced widgets and functionality into your pages that live in the shadow root in your PWA. Um, and so, of course, you can do that last step and the step here. So you can insert and remove things um, uh, also manually because it's really your XHR call 
by just regexing the source of the AMP page, like I previously showed with the service worker example. But the key is that the above is really easy for everyone, and uh, the classes also makes it super, super simple. And so here's something, uh, finally, uh, after AMP up and AMP down, it's like AMP sideways, up, down, whatever, Konami code, right? Uh, so time for an advanced pattern to wrap this all, uh, wrap this pattern up. So we have a pretty good experience now. But if you're in the Progressive Web app, copy a link and share it on Twitter, that link will open uh, the Progressive Web app directly, right? Because you, you're not on an AMP page anymore. And for a new user who doesn't have a warmed up service worker pre-cache, it won't feel instant. So that problem is also a problem we can solve in the final step of our development journey. Instead of, instead of creating a separate URL space for the Progressive Web App, so for instance, pwa.yourdomain.com, um, like we did before, we just reuse the existing AMP URLs to load the Progressive Web App on your site's origin. And so we're doing that by having the service worker simply intercept the navigation request. All we need to do for this is listen for that navigation request in the service worker, and then instead of serving a cached AMP page, we serve the cached PWA shell, which then does an XHR to fetch the requested AMP doc. This means that in just one request, your progressive web app will show up along with the requested content. So you got one AMP, one progressive web app, and one request. Now, best of all, we now progressively enhance our AMP pages with our progressive web app, ensuring that no matter what, your users will get a super fast experience, regardless of AMP or PWA. For browsers that do not support Service Worker, they simply see AMP pages. And even here, if you, don't, if you think, well, I still want my progressive web app, even though it might not have all the bells and whistles, to work on browsers that don't support Service Worker, and we have a solution for that too. Uh, we have something we call fallback URL rewriting that literally just landed this week. In, in the latest Canary version, which is sort of our beta channel uh, for AMP. And it means that if you arrive on an AMP page with a non-service worker browser, uh, we will realize that in AMP and rewrite all URLs, all outgoing URLs on your page um, by pattern matching um, based on a pattern that you can select to redirect to a fallback PWA URL. So you can have, for, for browsers that support it, you just use one URL space. Um, but in browsers that don't support it, will still go to the Progressive Web App. And we even load a hidden iframe that warms up the browser cache. Right? It's not as good as having a service worker, but it's still better than nothing. And so now we have, uh, uh, it's time for demos. But this is actually one demo that uh, the AMP team has built. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool React-based demo for you all to try out and get inspired. But I'm not going to go talk too much about it, because I thought it'd be even cooler to show you a real-world example. In fact, the first real-world example that we know of. And that's Mike, who, who've done a heroic effort in the last weeks to get this to its current state. Please welcome David Bjorklund, lead engineer of Mike, to show you the new progressive web AMP experience, a lesson learned on the way. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Uh, so let's go to the demo. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to start with loading the uh, loading an article. So this is uh, an AMP article. So as you can see in the, in the source code on the, on the right side, we're using the, the AMP tags. AMP tags. So if you would want to come from search, for example, this would be the instant experience. This is what a user sees when they come to this site for the first time. We have never been here before. Um, so let's go here and navigate to, uh, to, uh, to the menu. So I don't know if you noticed what happened here, but when we loaded the menu, we actually reloaded the page. Because we want to take you from our AMP article to our PWA as quick as possible. And in this case, since we have loaded the service worker in the background on the AMP page, it has loaded all the data that we need to show the PWA. And since we're sharing the URL, URL space, the URL is still the same. So we, we are now, we're now in PWA. 
So I don't want to talk like briefly about how we built this. So we set up to do like a proof of concept. We gave ourselves two weeks, and we had three engineers that could work on this. And as part of the team, we, we, like, we knew of PWA. Like, we'd seen the videos, we read a couple of articles, but we didn't have any like, hands-on experience on do, doing PWA. Um, but since we could reuse our existing AMP rendering pipeline unchanged, that really like, jump-started our AMP journey. Like, it was just a few days in, into the work that we could, like, we could start working with the fun stuff. We could start working on the service worker. We could start working on all of these PWA features because we had already AMP stuff in place. So that means that meant that we had time to work on, on performance improvements. So like we did what a lot of others have talked about today. Like we made sure that our JavaScript bundle was as small as possible. Uh, but it also, also made us, gave us time to like experiment and play around a little bit with UX improvements. Like the menu that I showed earlier where we do this, like this, this reload. Um, and it also gave us time to like really dig in and try to like learn as much as possible about the service worker. So we could like we could feel that we could, could come closer to something as a perfect cache. Um, and yeah, as, as, I, as I demoed earlier, it gave us time to implement web push. And like in, in the, the time frame that we had and with resources we had, we never would have time to do any of this if it hadn't been because of the, simp the simplicity that AMP, gave, AMP that embedding AMP in PWA gave us. So I want to. I want to. I, but when I when I did the slides, Paul asked me to like be honest with you and talk about the pain points. So I, I went through through and I tried to do a list and I talked with my team and we talked about like what has this how has this experience been, but like it was actually sweet. <laughs> like it worked. I, it worked as advertised. Like of course we had certain pain points doing PWA, but like everyone that's that's what we've been talking about for the last few days. But when it comes to actually embedding the, the embedding AMP inside of the PWA. PWA it just works as advertising, advertising. With that, Paul? I'd like to bring out Paul again so you can wrap up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, David. Okay. Uh, so wrap up. Now that you got it, we successfully combined AMP with a progressive web app. And now the user always gets a fast experience, no matter what. The site is progressively enhanced. You have less backend complexity because you just have one data source. And profit from the built-in performance of AMP everywhere, even in your progressive web app. And that really reduces the overall investment. Now, before I leave you, keep in mind that this is just one pattern to build sites. And it won't work for everyone. You probably shouldn't build the next Airhorner or Gmail with it, but focus on sites that have a lot of leaf nodes, individual sites with lots of static content. By all means, find out if that pattern is the right one for you, and feel free to get in touch to get to discuss. So check out our React-based demo. Uh, check out beta.mic.com to actually see a live experience. And uh, also learn more about progressive web apps in, uh, uh, on developers.google.com slash web, and of course, more about AMP on ampproject.org. And I really can't wait to see what you've built. Thank you. <laughs>